Hello everybody. This is part two of how to create heat maps using Google Sheets, Spreadsheets, and Google Fusion Tables. We're going to do a really quick review and then we're going to show you a few more ways to create heat maps. So let's go ahead and open up a Google page. Make sure you're signed in to your Google account. Then you want to go to your Google Drive. Go to the New button here, More, Google Fusion Tables. We already have our data table created as a Google spreadsheet, so let's click here. We're going to select Indiana counties. Click Select. Once it's loaded, click Next. We can leave this as is and click finish. And this will load our fusion table. And our first tab is our data table. And the important part of this data table is this geometry column here. This has the KML values in it and the KML values are a list of coordinates that draw the shapes or the overlays that go on top of your map and in this case these are the county shapes so let's take a quick look at that if you double click on it this box will pop up and you can see the geometry box here has the list of the coordinates uh, looks like a big long list of longitude and latitude coordinates and you can even preview that so let's click here we clicked on the Marion County row and the KML value for the Marion County row so this should be a preview of Marion County and it is okay so let's click done and cancel and get out of here now let's go to our map tab here and what you'll see is all of the KML coordinates for each county will be drawn as shapes and overlaid onto a map. Okay. Now when you click on this tab sometimes it'll be zoomed out. So just make sure you zoom in and sometimes it might even be like way over here or something. So just find the geographic area you're looking for and go ahead and zoom in. And then you can work with your map. Now the first thing we want to do is get rid of this red color because we want to do a review of how to create a heat map. And we need those counties to be the color of whatever our heat map designates. So to do that, you can go to Change Feature Styles here and then go to your polygons, fill color, fixed tab, and then change this drop down opacity to zero and hit save. And now you have just your counties with no color. Okay, and if any of this seems unfamiliar, go ahead and watch our first video on this because we go over everything in much more detail. So this is just a review. Now, to create the heat map, let's go to Change Feature Styles again. Go to Polygons, Fill Color, and then go to Buckets. Click this radio button, Divide Into. Choose the number of buckets you want it to divide into, and this will divide it into the number of colors that will be on your heat map. So let's start out with five. Choose the column drop-down for population because our heat map is going to be based on population. Make sure you ch click on this use this range to use the range of the population data. And then remember you can change these colors, you can change your ranges, you can take away ranges by clicking the minus signs, you can add ranges by clicking the plus signs, so on and so forth. And to create a really good heat map, it's a bit of an art and a science and we definitely will not be doing this perfectly in this example but we just wanted to show you a review of how to do it 
and we'll play with it a little bit here in just a second. So let's click Save, and we have the start of our heat map. Okay. Now another thing we want to do is let's add a legend. So go back to Change Feature Styles, go to Legend, Automatic Legend, click this Show Polygon Fill Legend box, click Save, and now you have a legend. Okay. That corresponds with the colors, so the population numbers correspond with the colors, and you can you can start to see what's going on here. Now let's change some of these ranges because you can see there's too much orange, and it doesn't really tell us very much yet. So, quick side note: you can click on your legend to pull up your options window, as well as clicking on this button here. Okay, and one more thing before we go any further is if this side window is gone and you want it back, so let's say you've clicked done and it's gone, to get it back you can click on tools and change map. Okay, so now let's play with these colors a little bit. So let's go back in and let's change our buckets to six and then let's play with some of our ranges here. Let's change this to 50,000. Let's change this to 100,000. And let's change this to 200,000. Click Save. Let's see here. Make sure we type those in right. 50,000, 100,000, 200,000. Click Save. Okay, and so now the orange colors are broken up a little bit and you can start to see a little bit more about what's going on here. Okay, so if you want to play with this, again, just you can click on your legend, you click on the change features, play around with the colors a little bit, play around with your ranges, see what makes the most sense, and see what type of map um, you would need to create to help you make decisions. That's the end goal, is you want to visualize this data in a way that really helps you make decisions. Okay? Now let's show you a second way to create a heat map. It's very similar to the example we just went over, but it's slightly different. So in order to do this, let's go back into our options window. And instead of buckets, we're going to use gradient. And what you'll notice is the way you create the gradient heat map is very similar. You just have a little bit less control over the actual values of the ranges. Okay, so let's show you an example. Click on this radio button, show a gradient. Make sure that your column data element is set to whatever you want it to be. We want it to be population. Okay, and make sure that the range you see in the from box here and the through box are correct and match your data. And if they're not, you just click this use this range. So here we've started out with four colors. They're all the same color, they're just different shades of green. Now, before we mess with the colors, let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So let's click save. And a little side note, if the colors don't load, right off the bat you can usually fix that by opening up your window and clicking save again and that should fix it okay so now you can see our new gradient heat map and the darker colors are the more densely or highly populated counties and the lighter colors are the less densely or lower populated counties as you can see it corresponds to our legend here Let's go back in and let's add one more shade of the color green. Okay, click save. Updates it a little bit. So you can see that some of the more highly populated counties are here in the middle of the state, up here in the northwest part of the state, over here, right here on the eastern border. 
Now, there's a highly populated county down here in the south. Okay, so it's just a another way to look at your data and to visualize your data. Okay, let's go over one more way to create a heat map using the Google Fusion tables. So I think we can go ahead and close this out here. We can go back to our drive, go back to new, more. We're going to create a new Google Fusion table. Again, we already have our data sheet ready, our data table, and it is in a Google spreadsheet. So we can click on Google spreadsheet here. And in this case, we're going to choose the largest city file here. Click select. We can go ahead and click next. And we can leave this as is and click finish. And this will load our fusion table. Let's just quickly go over our data here. So as you saw before, the main important piece of our data table was the KML column. Well, in this case, we're going to use latitude and longitude. So here we have all of the 50 states, and we have the largest city by population in each state, and then we have the approximate location of that city um, designated by the latitude and longitude here. Then we have two weight, weight columns, if you will. One is population and one is a ranking system by population. And we'll show you what we can do with those in just a second. So let's go ahead and click our map and this fusion table, will, it will go ahead and it will map some of this data and then we can begin to work with the data and do some visualizations. So click on our map tab and it will, ge it will do a geocode and this will take a little bit of time. So let's just give this a second to load. Okay, so our geocoding is finished and the first thing we want to do is go to the location, drop down here, and we want to choose latitude and longitude. Okay, and that will change the markers to the location that we have specified in our spreadsheet table here. Okay. Now the next thing we want to do is go to the heat map section right here. And you'll see that you, you get a little heat map. And each dot here is the location of the city, the largest city in the state. But this isn't really telling us anything yet. So one thing that we can do is we can add a, a weight. And we have two weights in our table here. One is the actual population. Let's go ahead and try and sort this largest to smallest. OK, so we know a few of the largest cities in the US right off the bat are New York, um, New York City, Los Angeles, Chicago, Houston, Philadelphia, and so on. So we have this sorted by population, and let's take a look at this heat map using population as a weight. So to change that, go to your weight, drop down here, and choose population. And then what you want to do is you want to play with this radius and opacity slider and then you can start to get a feel for your data. Okay, so let's let's crank this all the way up. And let's crank crank this all the way up. See what it looks like. So this if you knew nothing about your data table, you could see right off the bat that some of the largest 
cities in the United States are over here on the northeast coast. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Uh, we know that this is New York City. And then another very large city is over here on the southern west coast. And we know that that's Los Angeles. But again, if you didn't know much about your data, your data visualization map should tell you something about your data without having to, to look at it right off the bat. Okay, This, I'm guessing this is Chicago. Yep, yeah. okay. So that is one way that you can use your weight. Let's do another weight. Let's do a ranking system, and we have that labeled as largest. Okay, and let's go back. So what we have here are the 50 states and the largest city in each of those 50 states. And instead of a population weighting, we just did a ranking weighting from largest to smallest, from 50 all the way down to 1. Okay, now when you look at the heat map in that way, it provides another type of visualization that might tell you something that the population weighting did not. Okay, so just play around with that. And that is it for this second tutorial on heat maps. We'll be doing some more fusion table tutorials in the near future. Be sure to join us for those, and we'll see you next time.